Hey, welcome back to Better Together. Thank you for being a part of these small group discussions that we've been having. We're in session number five, and we're talking about Better Together when we serve together. We've covered a lot of information so far, but today we want to talk about when we serve together, we're better. You know, here at Capital Christian Center, we have what's called our discipleship classes. And in 101, we learn about how to be a part of God's family. And 201, we learn about how to grow in our spiritual maturity. And in 301, we learn about our shape and we learn about our ministry that God has for us and how we're to serve Him here on this earth earth while we're preparing for eternity. But today, I want to talk about how we can serve together as a group. You know, in the world, you know, the world focuses on you arrive by how many people serve you. How many servants do you have? How many employees do you have? How many people take care of you? You've arrived when you've got a lot of people that take care of you. But that doesn't wash with God because God is actually the exact opposite. With God, it's service, not status. With God, it's all about how many people did you serve, not how many people served you. And that's really different from the way the world thinks, but you know what? We're not of this world. We are the family of God, and God wants us to serve together to have an impact. Now, remember, there's a couple distinctions. Every believer has a ministry in the church and a mission to the world outside the church. So we have a ministry in the church which takes care of the family of God, and we have a mission outside the church that reaches out to those that don't yet know God. Ministry is really thinking small. Whose feet can I wash? Who can I give a cup of water to? Who can I open a door for? Who could I warmly welcome? Mission is thinking big. How can we impact the world? How can we reach the rest of the world for Christ? And so every believer has a ministry in the church, which means it's not the four walls, but it's taking care of God's family, His body. And every believer has a mission outside the church, which is reaching people who are far from God and don't yet know God. So in today's session, I want to talk about four aspects of what our small groups can do to serve together as a small group. It's, it's one thing to serve by myself, but it's better when I can serve together. I'm stronger when I can serve together. I can accomplish more when I serve together. I can get more done when I serve together. So serving is good. Serving together is better. So here are four things that I want you to think about and talk about at the end of this uh, video that your group can talk about. Number one, groups that serve together make themselves available. That means they're eager, they're willing, they're ready, they're available. I don't know if you notice this, but many times meeting needs come unscheduled. You know, when children wake up in the middle of the night, they don't necessarily schedule that. It can be a general time, but it's often not scheduled. It's, they let you know when they need them. And so needs often arise, and God wants us to be available to meet those needs. That's just having the attitude in the heart that says, God, I want to serve. Our group wants to serve. How do you need us? Where can we serve? I heard a story about um, a person who went into the hospital, and pastor was going to see them, but when they got there, that person's small group was already there, and they'd come to find out that, of course, the person had been prayed for, but they also had child care figured out, they had meals figured out for the rest of the family to take care of the family, someone else was making phone calls to inform the rest of the family, almost every Thing around that person was being met and and the pastor was there and he didn't really have anything to do that's a great example of us being the family of God meeting needs because they sometimes come up um, unscheduled and we're not aware of them and so as a group 
Let's be available to the needs that arise in our church and ask ourselves, how can we meet and how can we be available? How can we be willing to meet those needs that arise in our family? Isn't that what makes a good, healthy family or a good, healthy marriage? That when there are needs arise, that we're just responsive to those things? That's one of the things that make God's church a healthy church. The second thing that we can talk about are groups that serve together work as a team. Now, when we work as a team, we can compensate for our weaknesses and build upon our strength. And if we build upon our strength, we can really marginalize our weaknesses. And so we become known for our strengths and not our weaknesses. What do you mean by that? Well, take sports, for example. In basketball, where do they put the seven-footer? They put him down under the basket. Where do they put the, the shorter guy? They put him out on the perimeter because usually he's better at dribbling the ball. Tall guy's not really good at dribbling balls. What are they good at? Rebounding. So put him close to the basket. The yes, shorter guys are usually better at dribbling. And so we compensate. What you don't want to do is you don't want to put the seven footer out on the perimeter dribbling the ball and you don't want to put the five two guy down trying to rebound the ball. That's the recipe for disaster. So when we serve as a team, we start figuring out what we're good at. We figure out what I'm good at, what your friend is good at, what your neighbor's good at, and all of a sudden we start identifying our strengths and we start building around our strengths and we start allowing people to serve where I might be weak, somebody else can be strong in that area, and it makes us better. Here's what Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 16 says. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself in love as each part does its work. In other words, every part of the body of Christ has its own share to do, has its own work to do. If you remember back in session three, I used the story of the guy who was carried by four friends to go to see Jesus. And when he couldn't get in the house, they tore the roof off and let him down. Jesus saw the faith of the friends and healed the guy. But I want you to think about this. That was a team working together. One person had a need. Others carried their friend. Now, can you imagine if they all tried to work in different directions? If they all tried to uh, maybe do it, instead of carrying him, they took turns carrying him. I'm going to carry him for a little bit. Now you carry him for a little bit. That would have been exhausting. There's a whole bunch of ways that that could have been poorly done. But what did they do? They put him on a bed and they four of them worked together. They carried him there. Then they got on the roof. Some opened the roof. Others were down below helping him get up, pull him up. They worked together. We're stronger when we work as a team. Here's why. They had the same goals and the same faith and they released greater ability and power. Here's a question. I want you to really, really think about this question. What could God do in our church if we, our small group, worked together? Every time I think about it, it's, like, it's just like, wow. Could we make a difference? Could we have an impact? Could we really solve a problem or a need? Could we free up a leader to serve in another place, in another area of responsibility because this need is being taken care of? We can say, Pastor, I got that. You can say to your leader, I, I, you, you go take care of something else. We'll take care of that for you. How awesome would that be? And, and what if our, all the small groups did that? Wow, are you, can you imagine the impact we could have serving together, meeting the needs of what's going on in our church family. So I want to encourage you, pick an area of ministry, you know, and talk about it and say, where could we serve together? Maybe it's in student ministries. Maybe it's being an usher team. Maybe it's, um, you know, helping in the office. Maybe it's making care calls. Maybe it's doing administration. Maybe it's starting a ministry here at Capital Christian Center that maybe there's a need that we're not meeting because we don't have a team to take care of that need. There are things like Celebrate Recovery. Those things just started because someone saw the need. We have support groups that are going in because someone says, I'm going to get trained and meet those needs. We have classes that are happening because someone says, I see a need and I want to help people with that need. See, what are the needs that your group can meet? 
And if that ministry doesn't exist, maybe we could start that ministry here at Capital Christian Center because I believe God is wanting us to be a great family because we have a great heart to serve. Now, number three, groups that serve together think more about others than they do about themselves. And we can think about this. We live in a world, we live in a culture where people spend a lot of time thinking, worrying, fussing, griping over themselves. God has called us as believers to think of others. And that's real, true maturity, but it's also humility. Humility is not, let me clarify that, it is not thinking less of yourself. Humility is thinking less about yourself. It's thinking about others, the needs of others. Here's what the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 2 out of the Message Bible. It says, forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. Point out the truth. Can I just forget myself long enough to serve somebody else? And then Ephesians 4 declares it this way. That um, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. In other words, God is saying, when I think less of myself and I think about serving and then I partner with others who want to serve, the Bible says I get a good return on my labor. Now, I want you to think about that. Many people get burnt out in serving. They get discouraged in serving. They get weary in serving. Why? Because they often try to do it by themselves. They often try to do it alone. But the Bible says two are better. Two are better. Why? We get a better return on our labor. And here's the interesting thing. It's amazing how stronger we feel, how much better we get a second wind when we feel like we have a partner. Um, we all get discouraged at times. Uh, we all get down at times. Um, no matter how positive or up or great attitude that we have, there are things that can discourage us. And here's what the Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. See, when we get discouraged to have a buddy, a friend, a, a partner, a teammate cheering us on, say, come on, let's do this. You can do this. We got this. Let's make this happen. I'm, I'm with you. I'm for you. Having a partner always helps us to serve better. Uh, when you have a partner, it just gives you extra sin incentive and extra motivation to ply and try just a little bit more. And that's where we get the good return on our labor. Number four, groups that serve together do every task with equal dedication. What do you mean by that, Pastor? It's not the task where I find my motivation. It's who I'm serving that gives me my motivation. In other words, the Bible says, whatever you're doing, do it as unto the Lord. So if I'm giving a cup of water to someone, that's to the Lord. If I'm doing something that I might think is important, that's to the Lord. It's not scalable in that sense that if it's a big thing, it's really important. If it's a small thing, it's not very important. Don't think like that. Do every task with equal dedication because every task matter. If you're cleaning the house of God, you're making it ready for people. If you're greeting the door, you never know that someone can come in lost, discouraged, and defeated and leave, build up, saved, born again, filled with God's Spirit, ready to go make a difference in life. So never minimize the task because you're doing it as unto the Lord and not unto people. Here's what the Bible says in Mark chapter 9 in verse 35, Jesus said to his disciples, sitting down, he called the twelve and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and servant of all. And then he says in John chapter 12 in verse 26, anyone who wants to serve me must follow me because my servant must be where I am and the Father will honor anyone who serves me. Now I want you to think about this. Jesus washed feet. Jesus made breakfast. Jesus um, served people food. 
Nothing was beneath Jesus. We shouldn't let anything be beneath us. Whatever we do, we should do it as an audience of one. Because what? God is watching. He says, if you give someone a drink of cold water in my name, you'll be rewarded. Because God notices our acts of service. And here's the thing. When we serve, we actually start losing ourselves. And if we do it as unto the Lord, when we lose ourselves in that act of service, we end up finding ourselves. And that's really what God's calling us to. He's not trying to get something from us. Church isn't trying to get something from us by asking you to serve. God's really trying to help us find ourselves because we can never find out who we really are thinking about ourselves. We find out who we really are by learning to serve and give our life away unto the Lord by serving His body and His family. Listen to what this last scripture here says in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for Him and how you have shown your love to Him by caring for every other believer as you still do. God says, I'm not going to forget your labor. I'm not going to forget your hard work. I'm a just God. I'll remember what you've done for me, done in my name. So I want to encourage you as you spend some time together in this discussion today, I want you to think about what could our group do to serve together? What ministry could we come alongside and have an impact on? Or what ministry could we possibly start and work together to really have an impact meeting the needs of people in our community and in our church family? So thanks for joining today. I want to pray for you as we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for each of these groups and each of these attenders in these groups. I know that you've called us to do more than learn about you. I know that you've called us to do more than just worship you. I know that you've called us to do more than just um, you know, share your name and love with others. And you've called us to do more than just be in your family. You've called us to serve your family. And so let us be the church you need us to be and the family you need us to be and let us serve your family motivated by your love doing it unto you in Jesus name. Amen. Thanks for joining today.